here is a joint, and a member of truss. Connected together. Now, what will happen? If you apply a force on this member in X direction? Well, the joint and the member would accelerate in X direction. To balance this joint in equilibrium state, you must apply equal force but in opposite direction. This opposite force, is applied by another member in truss. It is in tension state. Now, here are four members connected through a joint and lying along two intersecting straight lines. One member is compressing the joint. Another one is pulling it. To be in equilibrium, the forces in opposite members must be equal. Consider next, in which a joint connects three members and supports a load. Two members lie along the same line, and some load acts along the third member. To be in equilibrium, the forces in the two opposite members, must be equal, and the force in the other member must equal to the applied load. Therefore, joint's free body diagram would be like this. Now, the load applied is removed, and the joint is still in equilibrium. So, what will happen? To member AC? In this case, no external load is applied to the joint, we have load equals zero, and the force in member AC would be zero. Member AC, is said to be a zero force member. Now consider again, a joint connecting two members only. We know that a particle acted upon by two forces is in equilibrium, if the two forces have the same magnitude, same line of action, and opposite sense. So, in the case of this joint, which connects two members, AB and AD, lying along the same line, the forces in the two members must be equal for pin A, to be in equilibrium. But, in the case of this joint, pin A cannot be in equilibrium, unless the forces in both members are zero. Spotting joints, that are under the special loading conditions just described, will expedite the analysis of a truss. Consider, for example, a truss loaded as shown. Take a look at joint C. It connects two member only. So, joint C cannot be in equilibrium, unless the forces in both members are zero. So they are zero force member. But if the load acts along the same line like this, then they are not zero force members. Now isolate joint D, and take a look. 3 kN force acts downward, it is balanced by member DB in opposite direction. Similarly, member DC is zero. Therefore member DE must be zero, to be in equilibrium. Now, take a look at pin and roller support. They must generate reaction forces vector like this. Ok now, isolate the roller support. Its horizontal reaction force is balanced by member AB. But member EA doesn't seem to be balanced by any force. So member EA is zero force member. It's time to isolate pin support. Member EA, and ED is zero force member, which has already been identified. The horizontal and vertical reaction forces, of this pin support, seems to be balanced by member EB. Precisely saying, it is balanced by rectangular component of member EB. You need to apply the force law of equilibrium, to identify their forces. Now consider another example, a how truss is loaded as shown. Joint C connects three members, two of which lie in the same line, and is not subjected to any external load, member BC is thus a zero force member. Applying the same reasoning to joint K, we find that member JK is also a zero force member. But joint J is now in the same situation as joint C, and K, so member IJ, also must be a zero force member. Examining joint C, J, 
and K also shows that the forces in members AC, and CE, are equal, that the forces in members HJ and JL, are equal, and that the forces in members IK and KL, are equal. Turning our attention to joint I, where the 20 kN load, and member HI are collinear, we note that the force in member HI, is 20 kN, and that the forces in members GI, and IK are equal. Hence, the forces in members GI, IK, and KL, are equal. Note that, the conditions described here do not apply to joints B and D. So it is wrong, to assume that the force in member DE, is 25 kN, or that the forces in members AB, and BD, are equal. To determine the forces in these members, and in all remaining members, you need to use the method of joints. Note that, these zero force members are not useless. For example, although the zero force members of these trusts do not carry any loads under the loading conditions shown, the same members would probably carry loads if the loading conditions were changed. Take a look at joint K. If load acts in upward direction like this, then it is taken care by our zero force member JK. If you remove this member and apply load then it harms the structure of our truss. So, these members are needed to support the weight of the truss, and to maintain the truss in the desired shape. Hey! Subscribe my channel for more engineering mechanics.